Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the laws of probability, and we did a lot of math examples with dice and some uh, cards and t flipping of coins and things like that. But we also did some biology examples, and we talked about simple probability applications and bundle squares, and we also talked about the dismally small chances of independent assortment of homologous chromosomes doing anaphase 1 of meiosis, putting all of your dad's genes in one of your gametes. The chances of that were dismally small. I think it was 1.9 times 10 to the negative 23 or something like that. And then we looked at also the chances of a protein being assembled completely by chance, and that was even more, even smaller. That was basically zero. And but although we did some biology examples, it was mostly about the math and trying to understand how to use the law of addition and law of the multiplication. Remember that the law of addition you use any time you're saying or. In other words, events that cannot happen together or are mutually exclusive. Uh, and then you basically add a probability of each one of those events. Now, if the events are independent events that can happen together, and you, the problem has the word end in it, it's probably the law of multiplication that you're going to have to be using. So, let's see how you can use examples of this to actually make your life in genetics a lot easier. So, if you have a um, uh, F1 cross like this, you have a father's genes to be big A, big A, and then mother's genes to be big A, little a as well, what are the chances of a child being like this, bit little a, little a? What you're asking here is the chances of having one little a gene and having a little a gene as well. So when you see that and, you're going to turn that into a, a, a multiplication sign. And uh, I remember that the and is really, cl I even drew the, the, the and connected to the D, so I remember to do a multiplication, and that's pretty much what you have to do here. Now, what you have to do is, what are the chances of getting a little a uh, from these parents? Okay, well, this parent uh, can give me, there's only about a one and a half chance that this parent is going to give me that little a, right? So the this parent, can, there's only one and a half chance I'm going to get that lucky. So there's one and a half chance that the first of my, chroma, of my genes is going to be little a, little a. What about the other parent? There's one and a half chance that I'm going to get that. So again, it's going to be one and a half chance. That means one and a half times one and a half is one fourth. So I will get one fourth chance of having this particular genotype. Now, when you actually do the Punnett square, you remember that only this corner sees the little a, little a out of the four corners. And so in an F1 cross, you get one out of four uh, homozygous recessive. So you see how you can actually, without doing a point of square, you can figure that out. So let's try again to do that. So you have a parent that is big A, big A, and a parent that is uh, little a, little a. What are the chances of making a child that is like this? Okay. Now, that one will be a bit little more complicated, and we're going to have to come back to it uh, after we do our or. So keep that in, in mind, and we're going to do that in a second. Now, let's think about the or. Now, what are the chances, okay, that you're going to get in a cross, like the one we just did, the F1 cross, what are the chances you're going to look dominant? In other words, what are the chances of looking dominant? Now, you should know it's a 3 to 1 ratio. That's because you memorized the, the cross and F1, you know it's 3 to 1. But what if you didn't memorize? Now, you know that there's two ways of looking dominant. You can look dominant by being like that, or you can look like dominant by being like this. Yes? And so, either way will do it. Either way will do it. But you can't look both this, either way at the same time. You either, walk, either you look one way or you look like the other. So this is an or problem. Okay, so what are the chances of looking like big A, big A? So let's think about that. What are the chances that the first parent is going to give me a big A? That, well, that's going to be a one-half chance, right? So I'm actually using the law of multiplication there. What are the chances that the parent is going to give me another big A? The other parent. Well, that's also a one-and-a-half chance. So that, so that I know that the chances of this big A little A using the law of multiplication, which we did before, is going to be one fourth. So this will be a one and a fourth chance of that happening. If you did a point of square, you know that that chance is right there. So you know that that's right. Now, what are the chances of having this one happen? Well, the chance of that the first parent giving me a big A is actually one out of two. Right, so that's the only thing that could happen. And now the chance of getting a little bit, a little away from the second parent is also um, one out of two, right? So I can get one fourth 
again. Now, the, uh, this could actually happen the other way around, too, because maybe it could get the little a from the other parent and the big a from the second parent. So there's another one and a half times one and a half chance of that happening. So I get one fourth. So the total of chances of getting this, because I have to word or, I have to add the chances. So it's one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is going to be three out of four, which is what you know to be the answer. Because three out of the four will be either that or that to make you look dominant. So that's what you do. Now, I know that it doesn't really make sense in your head to use this, these things for a, for a simple Punnett square. So it doesn't really make sense to use multiplication and addition laws when you're doing a simple Punnett square. But I just wanted to show you that you could. But it's when you have to do the dihybrid crosses that it makes sense. Now, let, remember how hard it was to do this dihybrid cross? Big A times big A, big, big little A times big B, little B. And then you get another person that's just like that. So you're getting someone who's hybrid for two traits. Now, you should memorize that this always gives you a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 genotype, uh, phenotype ratio. But what about the genotype ratio? You have to do the actual uh, thing to figure it out. So what, I, what if I ask you a question like this? Uh, if I have a parent like that, what are the chances of getting a child like this? All right, so now we have a problem here. What are the chances of that? Now, um, basically, you use the laws of probability. You can't do the Punnett square and waste time doing it, but it's easier to, to look at the things separately. Remember, independent of assortment, what happens to one thing has nothing to do with what happens to the other. So I can pretend that this is actually a cross like this, big A, big, little A versus big A, little A. I can pretend that that's there because what's happening to the other cross doesn't have anything to do with it. So you see... The, each trade is doing this independently. Does it sound familiar? Yes, independently. That is the word and. When you hear independent, there's the word and. And the word and means multiplication. So you're going to be multiplying some probabilities here. Now, what, are the, what is this? This is an F1 cross. In an F1 cross, what are the chances of getting a hybrid? Now, if you know the, your ratios and you memorize them, you know that the chances of this is one half. There's a one and a half chance you're going to get a hybrid for that for that cross the same thing is true about this so it's a one and a half chance there as well so if you do this you're going to get a one and a half chance of that happening so since these are two independent events all you got to do is multiply one half times one half and you get one fourth so that means you got a one and a four chance that a child will be like that now if the question asks you how many children out of 16 would be like that well you just do the math, you know, 1, 4 out of 16 is going to be um, 4, right? So that's pretty much how you use these probability laws to do, make these problems a lot easier on you. Now, I know that this point of square was still fairly simple. That you could have done that faster. So what if you had something like this, for example? How would you do a point of square of something of this dimension? If you get something like big A, big A, big B, little B. Big C, little C, big D, big D. And you multiply that by someone who's hybrid for all traits. So, big e, little A, big e, little B, big, B, big C, little C, big D, little D. And so, what would you get? What if I ask you, what are the chances of getting a hybrid child? So, someone that looks like this. Who, oh, child who is homozygous dominant for all traits homozygous dominant for all traits so how would you tackle a problem like this and do a point of square with it it would take you forever this is like a massive point of square if you were to actually try to do a point of square like this you will see soon how crazy it would have actually been to try to do a point of square of this so let's try to actually figure out that there are easier ways to tackle this first you can look at the A's independently because of independent assortment what happens to one trait will not affect what happens to the other. So you can look and realize that this particular clause between the A's over here, all right? so this particular clause is A what? Big A, big A, this is big A, little A, that's an F2 cross. So the chance of this particular um, offspring, it will be one half for that trait. But you also have to look at this trait at the same time. So you have an um, a end event. And so ends is going to be independent of assortment. 
and so you're going to multiply and then now you can do the big b's but you look at them together you realize it's an f1 cross between two hybrids and a chance of getting a hybrid and an f1 cross is also one half so you're going to have another half chance right there and then you got a big c little c well that's an f1 cross again that we have here so in an f1 cross the chances of getting another hybrid is again one half so you're going to have again one half and then finally you have to look at the d's and you can see that, that what you have is big D, big D versus big D, little D. That's an F2 cross. And an F2 cross, the chance of getting a hybrid or one of the parents is just one half. So what you can see is that you're going to have one half times one half times one half times one half equals one sixteenth. So one out of sixteen boxes would be the child that you want. However, you want or this child because you have that child or that child that will make you happy so since I said the word or since I said the word or now you know what that means or means plus so you would have to add the, that probability to the probability of the bottom so you just go back and calculate the probability of the bottom so you again the first cross is an F2 cross the chance of a dominant is going to be one half the second cross is a F1 cross the chances of a, a homozygous dominant is going to be one quarter so this time you multiply by a quarter the third one is an F1 cross. Chances of, of, of a homozygous dominant is again one quarter, so you multiply by a quarter. And on the third one, you have another one of those F2 crosses, and the chance of looking like either of the parents is one half. And you see how if you memorize the patterns of the crosses, it will help you a lot. So what you get here is one half times one quarter times one quarter times one half. That's 163264. One divided by 64. So one in 64 chances. I think it would be like that. But now you have to add them together, 164 plus 1 16th. So the common denominator will be something like 64. Uh, the 16 will fit in 64 four times. So that's 4 plus 1. That's going to be 5 divided by 64, which means you get 5 out of 64 children of, a, of this particular cross will, will actually be either this or that. So that is your probability. By the way, you know, as you notice, there's a greater probability of that happening than a probability of this particular one happening, right? So you can see that. But if you were actually trying to do this, so let's actually try to do a Punnett square. Let's see, first of all, how many gametes you would have to create. Now, in the first person here, I have uh, two hybrids. So remember, from the law of two to the power of hybrids, so two to the power of hybrids. And this would be, in this particular case, two to the power of two, which would mean four four gametes so I could make four different kinds of gametes with that one over the, over here I have four hybrids so it will be two to the power of four which would mean 16 16 gametes so this particular um, combination of traits would give me 16 gametes and since I have four and then 16 I would have to do a Punnett square that is four rows so something like one two three four rows and then you have to get those rows and divide them in 16 columns. And I'm not even going to do the rest because you get the picture. This will be a 4 by 16 point square. 4 by 16 point square. That would have 64 boxes. 64 boxes. And after you spend about half an hour doing that point square, and you'll probably make mistakes midway through it, only 5 of those boxes will make you happy for this case. So I promise you, if you actually try to do the point square, it would take you at least half an hour to, for, to work it out. And you can actually do that problem in just a few minutes. So as you can see, it's a much better solution to do it in. Now the last one we're going to do is another problem like this, just to see that how a typical problem will actually be like. Um, and so if you were doing this cross, you would realize that the A's, and again, remember you do it independently, are big A, big A, and versus big A, sorry, big A, little A versus big A, little A, that's an F1 cross, and there's a one and a half chance of getting a hybrid in a cross like that. Or second cross would be a P cross between true breeders, and you're going to have a 100% chance of getting something like this. All the children will be like that. And then our third cross, this is an F2 cross between uh, a heterozygous dominant and a so a heterozygous and a homozygous dominant. And in that cross, you have a half of a chance of being like either one of the parents. So there's no chance of being like this this particular child. So. Once you have that zero over there and you're going to multiply the whole thing by zero, that means the chance of this event would be zero. And so you see how it's easy to actually do something like that. Now, of course, if this was a little c, little c, that would be different because this would be one half. 
and then the chances would be one half times one times one half, which would be one fourth. And so this is a, this is how you do problems without actually having to do punnett squares or um, the actual trihyper crosses in this case. All right. So um, good luck with those genetic problems.